You don't know everything is one star. Snare, thanks for the lurk, buddy. Appreciate it. Romeo, turn left heading 230 to center maintain 4000. Lima contact Washington Center 12405. Washington Center 12405. Thanks
Yeah. All right, a, a Monday evening stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome all. All right, guys, welcome to the stream. It's, what is it? It's Monday night, a rare Monday night stream. And we're just going to do a little bit of relaxing, but uh, the most important thing that we're going to do today talk about in the airport editing department the microsoft flight simulator sdk scenery editor we're going to go in and talk about slope and runways and how we go about doing this so let's go right into it first thing i'm going to do is going to kind of jump down and we're going to look at this runway right here this is runway five left two three right at greensboro speedmont triad international airport kgso we're going to go down to uh, ground so level nine, here. 3, See all 3, the 000. lovely hard work I've been doing. And, uh, oh, first thing I gotta do is to go up. I should have done this before I started the recording. And down. There we go. That gets the out, all the elevation data in there. Oh, there's a taxiway sign. And, oh, what has gone on here? And I'm getting bazzy lights. What on earth is going on? Well, that's interesting. Might have to reload this. Bazzy's no pappies. Interesting. Because this runway, as I selected here, Go to lights. Sorry, Bazzy. Has these things selected. Didn't load properly. Okay, so for that, we'll just close it. Very interesting. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. 07 Rummy Airport's off your right side in five miles. Yeah, open project. November 07, Romeo. Roger, did you want the right Sephiris, side? welcome. Right side, just do a visual over there. I know it's November a lot to ask to get people to come and join me while Correct. Nomad's streaming, so I'm going to try to poach a little, few of his viewers maybe, get a little people, some people kind of double dipping, doing double duty as it were. All right, come on, Sim. There he goes. Now it's loaded properly. All right. That was very awkward. This is rare, where I get the vertices all lining up underneath the scenery. Doesn't happen often. There we go. All right. Anywho, so as I get down to ground level, I want you guys to see this. We have what is... Oh, the elevation stuff is still getting all warped up. Let's uh, try this again goes splashing back in and it all loads. There we go. Yeah. A little double dip and no one's going to blame you for double dipping streams. So anyway, as we get down to ground level, there we go. We finally see it. This is a mostly flat runway that we've got in there so far. Not a whole lot of interesting slopiness to it. Slopiness sounds like sloppiness with an E. I would imagine if that was an actual word, it would probably be similar. All right. Let's get right down on top of the tower cab here. A bit higher. So, yeah, there we go. As you can see, this runway looks flat. So we're going to change that. It's a very, very sloped runway in real life, and we're going to go over how we fix this. How we give it a little bit of a character. So into the scenery editor we go. I'm going to save everything there and select the runway. In fact, what I want to do is go to taxiways and whatnot and just lock. 
runway five right lock we're only gonna work i'm not even gonna work on a i don't even want to work on that apron i just want or the lines i just want the runway in fact let's get rid of all of that let's get rid of all of that i just want the runway so all those little nodes and everything for all of these are gone I'm gonna turn out I'm gonna turn all the taxi wheels off also. All of that stuff is gone. There we go. So the runway is selected. Now you go into the terraforming. Over here are the properties with the runway selected. Runway five left, two three right, go into terraforming. And you have a fall off distance, which is sort of the distance outside of it that it kind of meshes to the terrain and we have add profile so this is how this is going to work this is going to get kind of funky but what i want to do is going to open up the gizmo here and I'll select this vertice and it's you see it shows me what the altitude this is the altitude is showing me right here latitude longitude altitude 279.503361 meters. That's very precise stuff. Very precise measurements. Minus 244 feet per minute in the 310 sound. Best I've managed so far. For landing, that's that's decent. You gotta make those things like butter. Like butter. Uh if you're getting if you're hitting that slow, you're either coming in you're flaring way late or you're just bleeding off too much speed. You're, you're flaring too early, and then it's just slamming onto the runway. It's got to be one or the other. So try to be gentle. These digital airplanes aren't cheap. Uh, what was I going to do? Okay. <clears throat> so I want to show you the... The... the um, workflow that I use here. So I'm going to do a quick Google search for converting feet to meters. And then I come up. DuckDuckGo's got a converter right at the top. And I'll show you what that looks like here. Very basic. Very, very basic stuff. That's what it convert feet, convert feet to meters. Is what I search for, and then we put the feet in here, and we're gonna get meters, metres in here. So I can just go two seventy nine point five zero three three six one, and that is nine hundred seventeen point zero zero five seven 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 six feet, <clears throat> give or take. <laughs> so that is how high is this is saying it is nine hundred seventeen feet. I like to talk in feet because those are numbers that I. I understand. So I'm going to op open up Google Earth in the meantime. Google Earth Pro. And I'll do another window capture. And... Call it Google Earth Pro. There it is. So now I'm going to, inside of Google Earth Pro, I'm going to go up to the search part to touch KGSO, and it already finds the Piedmont Triad International Airport. And we're zooming on into it. Whee! There we go. So we're going to go over to the runway. Oh, uh -huh. And all I have to do is hover over this corner and see that it says it's 912 feet. So we got a discrepancy here. De old DEM data, not at all surprised that, that this is the way it is. Nine twelve feet in that corner. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna be switching back and forth here, guys. So just bear with me a little. Okay, so we're going to go over here and to the terraforming property part and hit add profile. 
That brings up the profile editor. I'm going to close the gizmo. We don't need that right now. Profile editor. This is a this is going to show us the slope of the runway that we're building. Right now it says there's point 0.1, there's point 0.2, or I think it might be point 0.0 and point 0.1. Uh, general settings, I want to auto-adapt the canvas. So as the altitude gets lower, it's going to zoom it out and make sure that the scale and everything fits the whole runway. Setting view. Close that down. Axis and grid. We don't need points. Current point settings. There we go. Point 0.1, point 0.2. That's what it's showing us. So point 0.1, I'm hoping, is this end. So you see the altitude, 279.50 something. Point 0.2 is 279.501. It's about the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point and raise it and see which part of the runway slopes. All right, I think it was the one that we're on. So anywho, so... The starting, of what I want to start with is making sure that point one is at 912 feet, which we measured off of Google. I'm going to use Google's numbers, which kind of clash with Bing's numbers, I guess. Is there a Bing Maps app even? I've been using Google. It might help if I had a Bing Maps app. Hey, buddy. My co-pilot in here. Let's go Bing Maps app. Maps out. Get elevation spin maps. Yeah. Hey, dude. All right. Maps dot thing dot com. How does that work? I don't even know. If that's how it works. KGSO. So already sort of point us in that direction here. There's a way to do it. This is terrible content. Okay. Anywho. <sighs> Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. 912 feet is what I said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you see? Yeah. All right, so we go to our little thing here. We pop in 9 to 12. Hit enter 277.9 or 776. Now, we, I have to know that because this all Microsoft Flight Simulator only measures things in meters. So we're going to have to go back in here. Point zero was zero. This uh, first one, the coordinate here is point zero is zero meters along this runway. So it's the first point. So in here, I'm going to double click on the 279. We're going to change it to 277.976. We'll round it. Hey, quieter. All right. Oh, and look at that point. So point one is way over here. So we got to figure out how to flip that. Yeah. <sighs> Two seventy seven no point nine or seven seven six. That's actually right. That's where we want it to be. And uh so did that. Now in Google Maps, Google Earth, I'm gonna go to the other end of the runway. We zoom the threshold here. 
This is saying it's 852 feet. 852 feet. So it goes from 912 feet on one end to 852 on the other end. That is a difference of 60 feet. It is a 60 foot slope, which is pretty, pretty big, I think. As far as slopes go, that's a big slope. So 852. So we go into... Our little web page here. That's not the web page I was talking about. Oh, you you're, you see the uh, the web page I'm talking about. I don't. Okay, so 852. So we put that number 852, and we got this number 259. And so we go over here. Say point two is 259.6896. It rounds it a bit. And that's the slope that we get. So this is the 5 left end, this is the 2, 3 right end. And that is the slope that we're working with. So, right off the bat, we've set two points that both threshold points are put in. And watch the difference that we get here at this airport. This side is higher all of a sudden. That side is much lower. I think it is anyway. Did it do it? Okay. Bring the gizmo up. It's going to show us that this point is two, still 279.49. It hasn't moved a bit. It seems to be taking a minute. Well, that's different. Okay, let's change this to something else, like 25 meters we'll put it in. This is very interesting how it's handling altitudes right now. Why is it doing this? I've not seen it do this before. I'm a bit stumped by this. Alright, so the good news is now we have a properly functioning runway. As I run down it, we're going to see that the, the runway surface itself is pretty flat left to right. And then the, the 25 meters either side is what we use to make it fall off. And as I move down it, it gets flatter. Envoy 3648, range for approach 5 left, altimeter 2996, do you have Lima? 2996, 5 left, we got Lima, Envoy 3648. Well, it's, it's having a good time here. Look at that fall off. That is fantastic. Okay. 
let's play with this number and then you can see this little box around it here moves wider so it's supposed to mean that it's going to take that much time to kind of go back to mesh in with whatever altitude it sees around the runway. 1.3648, descend, pause, refresh, maintain, 4,000, flighting 120 for the final flight support. I was really surprised that it put that huge slice in. That's how you get them. Less sloped runway. I don't know what to say about this, man. What's up, simulator concierge? Randomly parked cars with exclude. Yeah. So suppos supposedly, from what I've heard, like the randomly parked cars thing, like, for instance, a lot like this. You have to put an exclusion rectangle in, and then it won't actually show in the de the scenery developer mode, the scenery editor. It'll only show in the compiled project, from what I've been told. So those things, things like that, and like wind socks and stuff like that, and beacons, you're not going to be able to get rid of in the actual live editor. That crockpot biz, we don't use microwaves. Yeah, so I don't... This has not happened before when I've done this. So I don't know what, what exactly the story is here. I don't know what to make of that. I'm a bit uh, perplexed. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that'll iron itself out at some point. So... All I've done was taken the ending... The, eh, whatever. I don't want to worry about it too much. So, we have the endpoints for the runway done. And we'll see what it looks like from the tower view. You can see just how slanted this runway is. This is only with two points in it. So, we're going to do better than two points. But uh, I want you to sort of see kind of what sort of immediate effect that these things have. So, again, I'd like this from the tower view. Uh, sort of get rid of this. So we got the runway here. It goes slopey, slopey, slopey. Everything over there is very slopey, slopey. Down. It is very angled now. Very noticeably going downhill towards there. And then you got this weird ridge. High end. Definitely down to the low end. Okay, so that being said, so how do I do the rest of it? Now, a runway is not just a straight edge and if I just left it like this it would look absolute crap so what can we do I can do a couple of things I can go into this runway so make sure I do everything right here exclude vegetation around the runway Okay, that big old ridge isn't here anymore. I can, now it is. It's weird how that works. It actually functions properly until you get down there and then throws that wall of whatever up. I'm going to hope that that just goes away. I don't know what else I can do. I don't think that matters. Alright, so the terraforming part. Is Change the ter the, the, draw the fall off distance number. Let's see what happens. Change it to zero. And all of a sudden, the rest of the terrain moves quite a bit. Not that part, apparently. See, so now it's like flat as a pancake in terms of how it interacts with the rest of the scenery.
which is kind of where I like it. So if I click on this vertice, the gizmo says it's 279.5, which is, we know is not where it's supposed to be. Now it's because I turned the fall off off. The fall off off. By default, it says minus one. See, when we say minus one, what happens here? This kind of resets the altitude stuff, reloads it. Anyway, I don't know what's going on here. Oops, oops, oops. Boy, I've done something now. one's pretty much right. Okay, so that note is correct. Swing all the way back to this side. And we say, please, working on terraforming, or the runway profile specifically, it is tricky. It is doing strange things with the scenery. All right, now we look at this one here. 278. Supposed to be 270. Not 277.9776. Alright, let's bring the profile editor out. Check the first fix again. Point 77976. Okay. Laura Secret. Hello. Oh. Ah, I know who this is. No, I don't do the Twitches anymore. I'm over on here here on YouTube. Things are way more interesting on YouTube, I find. Good to see you, though. All right, so this is so. Let's get into it. Let's, let's talk about how I do this here. So, I want to get the whole runway's characteristics involved. So, I'm going to open Google Earth up, and I'm going to use the measurement tool. We're going to go back to the five end because I'm going to add a point. So, I'm going to get the measurement tool out, and I'm going to. What I'm going to do is use the tool. You can't see it. That stinks that you can't see it. Uh, is there a way I can dock it somewhere? No. But anyway, I'm going to start a point right here at the threshold of the... Oh, no, no. I didn't want that. I wanted everything up till then. I'll say right there. So I'll pick the center threshold of the runway. And I'm going to start... Okay, so I can already see down here in the bottom right that it says 912, 913, whatever it is. 913. I'm going to drag it until it says 912. Right when it starts to say 912, and I have to make sure it's still in the center of the runway. Take a measurement. There we go. And then you can't see it, but the measurement says uh, I have it set in meters, so it's 27.15 meters. Now remember, the first point is zero here, so I'm going to hit add new point. 
just click and drag and put it anywhere because the distance here I'm going to put that measurement of 27.15 so this measurement is 27.15 down the runway and I'm going to put I don't know if you noticed but the the number I got when I was measuring was 913 not 912 so 277.9 or 776 that's what I put for point 0.2 this is now point 0.2 I'm going to go back to point 0.1 and put in the number that I would get for 200, 913 feet, which is 278.2824. And now point 0.2 is the second one. So you can already see it's going downward a little bit. Oh, you can't see this. Here we go. So there's point 0.1 here, point 0.2 there. So it's already got a little downward slope. This is all... This is... It's showing you slope, and this is much slow. This is not how steep the runway is in real life. This this point here is so far down that way. It's a mile and a half long, so it's so far down that way that it it would look much shallower than this. But this is, if the runway was squished, the mile and a half runway was squished up to be this long. This is what this is kind of what the slope would look like. Yeah, can't see what I'm doing. I know. What I have to do. You already know that I'm I'm really bad at switching these things, and I'm even worse when I have to do it a lot. So, okay. So with that said, so that's nine thirteen here, nine twelve there. So now, I'm going to clear this measurement off. That yellow line will go away. So it's gone. Now I'm going to measure, go down, it's cursor down until I see 911. But I'm going to make sure I'm still in the center when it says 911. Kind of find the first point where it changes from 12 to 11. Right there. Now I'm going to measure back. I'll show you why I do that later. But it, as I get further down the runway, it keeps me from having to always scroll back to the beginning of the runway to start my measurements. So I can measure going this way one time and then I'll measure coming back this way the next time and so this measurement the only thing I'm trying to do is get how many meters from a, from this threshold this point is and this one is 79.45 so 79.45 so I'll turn that off so you don't see it anymore I'm gonna go add a new point Just throw it on in there this is 79.1.45 meters and as I do my conversion here, I'm at 911 feet. Is I'm doing this in one foot increments because I figure they're, they're smaller than meter increments. Meters are big numbers compared to so this will get us sort of more fine printed, finely tuned numbers. So it's 277.763 is what we got, and then see the next point. It's a little bit further away, but it's going to add a little bit of at some point this dip. This is going to really dip down here come a little bit flatter again it kind of dips down this way it's gonna have a nice big old dip it doesn't have it at the beginning the beginning of runways are little flatter parts so now you can see uh, what's happening on the actual runway is it's adding these little orange lines and those little orange lines represent each of the markers the little points that I'm adding here so this is the point one point two point three which we just did, and point four is the other end of the runway. As you add points, it'll do that more and more, and you'll start to see the contour of the runway change. And uh, it's pretty cool. So this is how you do it. This is how I do it. It takes time, because I'm doing 62 feet worth of, or yeah, 60 feet worth of altitude changes, which means I have 60 points in there, right? Something like that. It's going to take a while. So we go back to Google Earth. All right, I've got this yellow line here. So we stopped at 911, right? So I'm going to go down uh, until I see 910. 910 kind of happens right there. So again, I start, start my point here. I'm going back, so I only have to scroll back once. Click on the end of the runway threshold there.
Well, this is just my method. Maybe a lot of scenery devs, I think, will flatten the entire airport. And then some of them actually do the ground textures and stuff in Blender. So they'll do all of their, their ground polygons and stuff like that and just layer them on top of each other. They'll do an asphalt, they'll do a, a material layer, they'll do a... Sort of a, a, a grain layer, then they'll do like crud layer, then they'll do a, uh, like a paint layer, then they'll do tire mark layers and stuff like that. And just add them all kind of on top of you, uh, on top of each other. As long as it's flat, that all works really, really well. But you can't do all of that with a with a curvaceous uh, airport that has a lot of altitude changes and differential. This is this one has a ton of elevation change in it between this side of the airport and the other side of the airport. This is all added on and there's a bunch of hills and stuff like that. And that's what the DEM data of this this airport has also shown in the past too. Is it's it's kind of screwball. But anyway, so let's let's stick here. Let's try to keep the focus. So this next point that I'm going to do gets us to 910, so I'm going to go to my little Thing here, I got 910, 277.368. I'll keep changing that every time here. So we did that. Now I'm going to add a new point. This next point, as measured by Google Earth Pro, is 139.26 meters and 277.368 meters high. So 139.26 meters down the runway gets us to this point. Now check this out. This is pretty cool. You see it's kind of almost midway through this uh, runway centerline stripe right here. And we got the altitude there. Watch this. So when we go into Google Earth again, we see that that point that I just measured right here is about half, a little more than halfway down that line. Same spot, right? That is what we're going for, guys. See, so it's halfway down the runway, a little more than halfway down that paint line there, a little more than halfway down the paint line here. So that mean, that's how we kind of check to make sure that we're in the right spot. Yeah. Simulator concierge, this is definitely the part of this. This is my method. Maybe other people do other things, but this is how I get the measurements for this, and this is, I think... A bit time consuming. Contact Atlanta Center, 128.8 today. Ah, there she is. Katie's on. Uh, uh, so 909 is the next measurement we're looking for. As I get into here, I'm going to go down until we find 909. Sometimes you go quite a long ways. And, uh, this mouse that I have is a gaming mouse, so I actually have the ability to hit the sniper button and turn the DPI way down, so I can move it much, much more finer controls. So that more movement of the mouse makes less movement of the mouse in the actual PC. Next point measured is 169.98. Turn that off. Adding a new point. This is point five. One sixty nine point nine eight, and the number is two seventy seven point zero six three two. One has has a little bit of a ridge to it. You can see halfway between the first set of three bars there, and in Google Earth, you can see it's. Halfway between this first set of three bars. So I want to show you what I do next. This is my this is actually my method. Instead of going all the way back there and looking at it every time, I'm going to hit clear, start from the end of the runway this time, and I can click left click and hold as I drag down the runway, and I'm still looking for that same measurement. The measurement, by the way, is down here in this corner, right here. It says in feet. You can change it in the preferences to be a different measurement. That's what I'm looking at, and so I'm just going to go 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 until it says 908. Now 909. And 
908. There it goes. I make my click there, and it's 233.06. So I'm adding a new point. Just throwing it in there. It doesn't matter where it goes. Two thirty three point zero six and I'm changing it to two seventy six point seven five eight four. There it goes, there's our next point added in. Probably not gonna see a whole lot of change here because it's kind of slowly moving, but you'll see it as we gets a little further out. I do wonder sometimes how payware airports are licensed so they can use certain logos and trademarks that are visible at airports in real life. Is it just fair use? I want that's a good question. I've actually kind of wondered the same thing. So when I get into the 3D modeling portion of my scenery journey, I'm going to wonder, like, well, like the building logos that are at this airport, like signature flight support, that's got to be it. I'm pretty sure that's trademarked. And uh, so I don't know. I don't know if payware is allowed to use those things or not. Fair use is a very good question. Maybe they just do it and hope that nobody cares. It's the best I can think of. All right, so clear that. Looking for 907. I'm not going to go through the process of popping Google Earth back up here every time. So you're just going to kind of see me w trying to whiz through this because this, there's a lot of points, guys. There's a lot of points to do on this. All right, next point. 288.69 and 276.4536. Now, how do I type it in so fast? I'm just very. Got a lot of, a lot of uh, practice using the numeric keypad from, from work, especially. We use it a ton at work. Computer, learning how to run the keyboard that we have without looking at it. Status, how you like that? We got a female. Uh, Female control, air traffic controller. Where right now she's, I don't know if status is even here anymore. Laura's uh, secret. She is status. And it's weird because I'm not, I could tell from your picture that that was you. I didn't know that because I'd actually know that. Allegiant 1934, Greensboro Approach, altimeter 29 or 9 or 7, runway 5 right, descend to maintain 4,000. All right, delta 4,000. But I'm glad you came here and found me. Let's see, 906. Uh, uh, Allegiant 1934, we're going to need double. Uh, Add five. new points. Allegiant 1934, expect runway 5 left. 326.7 and 276.1488. Boom. A little smaller section here, a couple of longer ones. See just kind of how that's this happens because the measurements aren't super exact in Google Earth, I don't think. But uh, we're only dealing with like changes in altitude of a foot at a time, so they're not going to really make a huge difference in what we see in the the sim. That's why I didn't use meters because meters could tend to look really jaggedy, so I figured if I did a bunch of smaller altitude changes, it would look a little smoother. November 9690, Delta, Greensboro Approach, altimeter 29 or 9 or 7, runway 5 right. I'm drawing this in improperly. 7 and 5 right, and we'd like to do the on runway, actually 5 left. November 9 Delta, expect RNAV runway 5 left approach. All I expect an RNAV runway 5 left, 9 zero Delta. Yeah, it's got the right idea. November nine or zero delta, clear so what's seven. happening here is clear seven, it kind of smooth the sim sort of smooths it out on its own. It doesn't do exactly what you say, but uh, there's definitely we're definitely developing kind of a flatter portion here at the top, and you can kind of see it in this slope right here. It is it's kind of flat. This isn't really moving a whole lot, and then at then the slope kind of breaks downward a little bit, and we're seeing that kind of starting right here oh, that it definitely falls off. And that is mostly apparent right, from civvies, the view back here. 
that you can see that it kind of goes flat until the thousand foot bars and then it starts going down which is pretty much right where we are right in here in between these two points is the thousand foot bars so so far these small little changes we're making are working it's just really hard to see them which is good that's that's what we want yeah the bumps the the really sharp bumps and peaks and valleys and stuff are what just make your your plane go blah, 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 like bounce around and stuff and it's that's not a fun thing so this is that's kind of why I do this in these small little increments hopefully somebody somewhere realizes this understands it and appreciates it but I don't this is the second time I've done this runway ever like this and I think the product was pretty good last time I did it so all right so the next one 905 feet is what we're down to the cool thing about having it kind of open in this this window here this whole time is as long as I keep this number in this window I can tell what the last point I did was so I can kind of reference back and be like oh I'm on 905 now so so I don't duplicate anything or skip anything do something weird all right the next number is 385.25 this is not 285 it's 25 this is a little bit further away and the number is 275.844 there we go there's our next one this one's a little bit bigger than the last the last several fits in there nicely okay do the next point. So on and on like this, we go. Looking for 904 now. And I'm not looking for any, just any old point where it says 904. I'm looking for like the change from when it says it goes from 905 to 904. That's, that's how I'm kind of measuring. So it goes up to the point when it just turns 904. For, for you might be the other way around. It goes up to the point where it just turns to 904. That's that's my standard I'm using for the whole runway. That way I know I've gotten I'm getting full feet every time I go down. Hopefully that makes sense. What did I just do? Okay, so the next point. Make sure I've got 904 selected here. And if I keep talking like this, it's just gonna take forever. 427.16 meters down the runway. And the number is 275.5392. Which is going to round it just by 3.9. November 3, Whiskey Mike, contact Raleigh there approach 132.35. Good day. Still kind of flat. At some point here, we're going to hit the real dip. Allegiant 1934, descend and maintain 3,000. Advise when you get the field on site, 1 o'clock, 1 5 miles. It's 3,000 all in Allegiant 1934. Now we're on to 903. Type that into my measure, my converter, and start looking on the runway for 903. And 1934 has to be up site. Legion 1934, cleared visual approach, runway 5 left, contact tower 19-1. Good day. So visual 5 left, over to tower, Legion 1934. Have a good day. Swing all the way back to the threshold. Boom. Sorry, I left the screen up again. Back to the back to the threshold here. Oh, you can't see my mouse. There it is. November Niners here, Delta. Oh, no, going to maintain mouse. three thousand. Interesting. Descend three thousand. Three thousand. Nine zero Delta. All right. Four seventy five four. This is a bigger chunk again. That's sort of medium, I guess. And we go 275.2344. We're talking fractions of a meter here. Increments every single time I put one of these yellow lines down. So it is not going to be super noticeable. But you can notice that after the last points, it starts to slope down pretty good.
an airport headed on in infinite flight. Yeah, this is this is a whole different process, man. This is very, very different than infinite flight, and it's uh, a different kind of detail, a different level of detail, different different features. We can do sloped runways here. I don't think they can do that in infinite flight, can they? Be interested to know if they can do it or not. 902 feet. That's what we're on to. So this isn't the 10th. This will be point, yeah, point, this is point 11. Right, so yeah, so next one will be 12. So this is right, yeah, so this will be 11, f so I've done 10 feet. I've done 10 points so far. So that's what, one, one sixth of the way done. Good to see you, mobile pilot. Thanks for, thanks for joining us, man. This is not the, well, the sexiest uh, process ever here. Wisconsin, right. 3899. We'll take five right short for Wisconsin, 3899. Wisconsin, 3899, Roger. Expect five right. We'll expect it. Something we've started having to do at work because of the fact that our main runway is 2,000 feet shorter than it usually than it used to be. Is asking airplanes which runway they want. Normally, we just assign a, a, a runway to an airplane. Now we have to. Now we're asking them because it makes if they've already programmed something, if they've already assumed something, usually they come to us already having a runway that they're expecting, and uh, so they've. They can kind of decide we don't like to change it on them if we don't have to. So we're usually pretty flexible as to which runway, 2-3 left or 2-3 right, we give them. 2-3 right is longer. It's 9,001 foot. 2-3 left is 8,100 feet. So they usually want their longer runway. But normally we would just assign it to them on initial contact. Say, hey, expect this runway and take it. Yeah, I don't care what you, you're ready for. This is the runway you're getting. And uh, But now... But now, because of the shortened nature, we're asking them so that we can best accommodate the pilot. That's what we like to do, is accommodate the pilot. But not to the point where they get a big head about it. <laughs> All right, so that's point 12. So we've done 11 points, which means we're at 902. Done. Okay, so 901. Wisconsin 3899, cleared direct to Hagen. Final approach six or five right. Hagen for five right, Wisconsin 3899. Found it, swinging back. All right, the next point is 548.32 meters down the runway, 274.6248. There we go. See, it's it's a rather flat. It kind of goes down a little bit. Now it humps just ever so slightly here. That's going to start getting real steep. Any 3D object placements yet in Infinite Flight? I used to fly that sim a bit. Might have to pick it up again. I've never done anything in Infinite Flight. I've never used Infinite Flight before. I know you're not asking me, but... Seems to be popular. A lot of people that come into this, uh, into my streams that have that have used Infinite Flight, a lot of people that's their, their simulator. Cause I think because it's on the mobile apps, right? So it works in like uh, iPads and stuff. Oh, almost put there. For 900 even. Wisconsin 3899, just going to maintain 4,000. Wisconsin 4,000, Wisconsin 3899. Adding new points. This one is 584.75 down the runway. 
So yeah, it's nice to do these things on stream because we can have kind of a conversation while I do this. This is not the most involved work ever. Clear, and now we're looking for nine. Sure, eight ninety nine. I personally think that as the the distances between these these, me these points gets shorter, that the generally the the uh, slope is changing faster. So because it's an increment, still increments of one foot. So as they get closer together, and these are getting a little further apart here. This one's this is a pretty long one. Like I said, it's aggressive in the front, then it's going to sort of valley out, and then come back flat again. Ha! Huh. Thank you so much, Simulator Concierge. I appreciate that, man. Got to keep me sane. A labor of love. And somebody else said it. I didn't say it first. I saw it in a FS Developer, I think. Um, that's a it's a forum. FSDeveloper.org. Yeah, it's not a dot com. Yeah. Uh. All right, I'm making a fool out of myself by not knowing what is the suffix. F yeah, www.fsdeveloper.com is the website. If you go there, uh, dash slash forum, I guess. Yeah, that's it. FSdeveloper.com takes you to a forum where it's a whole bunch of people who are flight sim developers, and they do all sorts of stuff. Like, they've got chat rooms for different versions of flight simulators. And we're not just talking about Microsoft. We're talking about X-Plane. Actually, do they even talk about... Yeah, they got pre prepared... X-Plane, Flight Sim World, Aerofly, Microsoft Timber Flight is 200 even 200 in there. Green for approach, altimeter so different things, and there's, there's airport design, aircraft design, 3D assets, SDK, general Hello, stuff, terrain, north of Brooklyn, AI, living airport, world, missions, special effects, Sim Connect, like stuff like that that they talk about. Yeah, and so there's a whole lot of good objects, of good uh, forums in there, it's a good discussions really, people that... I've been doing this. Anyway, I went in there. Somebody somebody on that uh, that forum talked about this process, is how this process is kind of therapeutic, really. It's uh, it's relaxing. It's it's kind of mindless, and uh, so it's a nice way to kind of wind down at the end of the, the day. Wisconsin 3899 is going to maintain 3,000. We've got the airport site. Wow. 3899. <laughs> Wisconsin 3899, clear visual approach. Nice joke. Right. Nice Contact joke. Tower, 19 Good day. Clear visual 5 right, go to 19-1. Wisconsin 3899. Nicely 99. done, sir. Blue Street 5463 on the heading and contact Atlanta Center 128.8. All right. We continue on. Despite that joke. 658. 8.3. 2,900, cleared straight in, Arnav, runway 5 left approach. In fact, for that joke, uh, I'm going to hit you with one of these. This is the first time I've ever done one of these, so. Here it comes. <laughs> the drops. <laughs> They're coming, guys. I got a soundboard here on my stream deck. Uh, 
Those are going to be sounds that I, I eventually put into the chat room too, so you can play those in the middle of streams and everything. Tower 19-1, Tower 19-1, thank you, bye-bye. Oh boy. I had a coworker like you that used to make a bunch of really dumb jokes. It's very punny. You know, people kind of always roll their eyes at him and too, but I I appreciate anybody that's willing to make a nice, even if it's a, not a very good one, a pun from time to time. It keeps things light. You take yourself too so seriously, you know. I appreciate the puns. All right, 897 feet is what we're on to. All right, and the length here is 691 meters, point zero seven. Very small section here, so that leads me to believe it's possible that we're starting to get a steeper slope. And you can kind of see right around here, there's a hump where it's starting to roll over and get steeper. I don't know if you guys can see that. You probably can. There's much worse humor than simulator humor. Which brings us to 896. Eight ninety six. Okay. Distance down the runway. So we're always measuring the distance from the thresh the run the approach threshold. So that, because those are the measurements that these points all use. It's like, oh, it's the point away from point one. That's the distance from point one. So that's what all these little points are, are doing. That I'm measuring. That's 896, now 895. Points. Bring it back to the threshold. Done. It'd be nice if there was a way to snap, but uh, on the Google Earth, but I don't know of one. So that's always measuring the same po exactly the same point, and I'm not just sort of guesstimating. Uh, so seven fifty nine point two three two seven two point seven nine six. Starting to get closer together. A lot more altitude change happening here. All right. So one more time, I'll show you kind of what's going on in Google Earth here. So I'm clearing this. I have this yellow measurement line. I'm using the measurement tool. I've got this nice yellow line here. I'm going to clear it. It's gone now. I'm going to put the cursor right on the threshold, right on that nice big black line there. And swing down until I see 894. In the center. It's 895. 894. And backtracking till it says 895 again. Get an idea of where it changes. There we go. 895, 894. Right there. Click it. And it gives me 798.15. I go into my converter here, 894, I enter, and that gives me that number. And that is the number that I'll put in the sim for that point. So using those two numbers, I place another point, go into the box here. I'm going to change this to 798.15 and 272.4912. And it rounds it. There we go. There's the next point set. Again, this has definitely noticeably gotten a little bit steeper. Eight hundred ninety-three feet we're going to now, 
and I'll show you again sort of the, the, the backtrack that I do. So this is the point right here is get it to, to the cursor. There we go. This is the point where 893, the 894 switch happens. And now I'm going to go down further. I'm going to clear that yellow line. Go down further until I see 893, 892 even. 893, and I want it the point where it changes from 894 to 893. Right there. Now I start drawing this yellow line. I'm going to swing this all the way back. Bring this back to the threshold. There. It's nice that it has these straight lines that go around. All the different asphalt uh, stripes. Let's see exactly where the center is. And then we got a new number that way. 892. Is that where we're on? 892. No. We're on 893. Okay. So then close that up. Add a new point. Doesn't matter where it goes. It could go over here for all I care. Ooh, look at that. Because when I put these numbers in, this is 833.19. Okay, so that has already moved a bunch. And the new measurement is 272.1864. Look, it brought it back down. <laughs> so I re reset that coordinate. The, the price is right theme is in your head. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. Got some different stuff in your head now. Here, frying some chicken. Dinner will be arriving on the I'm Hungry 5 arrival <laughs> chicken transition. I love it. I love it. Stick with the aviation theme. Where's my approach control uh, recordings gone? It's either gotten really slow or it dropped out for a bit. Let's go in to the VEBS. Let's find a different one. Sometimes it just gets darn slow at our airport. Uh... All right, here comes Charlotte Tower. You lucky people, you. Real exciting there, too. All right, 291 is what I'm looking for now. Heading 240 and then the Street. That guy doesn't sound like he's having fun at all. All right, I just had a lot of boy. Guy just sounds bored out of his mind. So, here's a question: Is how many people are really going to notice whether this runway is accurately sloped? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. I don't know if they're going to notice if it's perfect or not. It's going to because it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close. But I think what people yeah. will notice is people who have flown into this airport will be able to look at it and be like, yeah, it kind of looks like that. That's what it kind of looks like. And that's what we're going for. Versus, wait, that's not what it looks like at all. Like, I'm not exactly sure what it looks like, but it doesn't look like that. You know, there's always going to be that, that effect. And for someone like myself, I might notice something like that if it doesn't look like the slope is accurate. And I guess it's the the people who really do fly into this airport are the ones I'm kind of catering to here in that respect. But uh, maybe 
somewhere down the line, some some people like you guys will fly this in the sim and then maybe actually fly into this airport someday in real life in it piloting an airplane. You can't see the slope of a runway from the back of an airliner. That's just something you just don't notice. But uh, maybe one of you will be flying into this airport and be like, hey, that's what it this is kind of what it looked like in a sim too. That sim was pretty accurate. So two different uh, kind of angles to, to think about these things at from be like, yeah, that's kind of why I do this. Mainly it's just because I don't want to look at a runway all the time. That ain't the runway that I look at all, all day, every day when I'm working. I don't want to see it. I will notice. I'll be like, no, it doesn't look like that at all. It doesn't look like that at all. I do this for a living. I look at this airport for a living. So I want it. That's kind of, that was my motivation for starting all this. Forget you guys. <laughs> I want it to look like right when I fly in, into it, in and out of it all the time. And since when I started streaming again, it's like I, I do fly, I try to fly out of this airport a lot. And that's that's what makes me like I guess a lot different than some other a lot of other streamers is that when it comes to this, I this is the airport that I know. I try to do a lot of my most of my flying out of this airport. Like when I do trips out and backs and stuff, I leave from this airport. It's just fun for me, I guess. I don't know. Because I'm very familiar with it. And the real, the more real it feels to me, the more immersive the thing. It makes me kind of want to keep doing it. When I look at an airport and be like, gosh, the ramp doesn't look like this at all. This this, so, this building over here, that doesn't look, that's not what that building looks like. It's like, ah. This, this sim has so, so awesome abilities with the tech, with the, the detail and the things that, like, ground-wise and, and weather-wise and everything that it's doing, to have airports that don't look like the airport that in real life, it's kind of a bummer. And we know we can, we know it's capable of better, so there has to be good people out there that put the time in to make it better. To give you something that whether you know it or not is a, of a higher quality. Heading 2407 Nine hundred fifty-four point five one meters. Let's see, kind of the percent—not the percentage, but you can see based on how far this this point is down this thing, how kind of the, the progress we're making in terms of length. About a third of the way through the runway now. Eight hundred eighty-eight meters is next. Feet, that is. Sorry. Anybody have any fun uh, flight sim news to, s to share? No sim uh, sim update. Ten, I think, is in beta beta phase now. Probably about a a month or so. So probably see it early next month. I would think. Sana Arshad. Yeah, only two people. Three people it shows me now, but yeah, one of them's me. <laughs> Any fun flight sim news? PMDG update coming, I guess, again soon. I deserve more. I don't know about that. 
I would deserve, I would say maybe I do deserve more if I was doing something more interesting than what I'm doing here. I'm not exactly bringing hard-hitting action. Everything went quiet, quiet all of a sudden. I was like, what did I do? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take... You don't see what I'm doing, but I'm going to make this maybe a little more interesting for you. And I'm going to put the Google Earth thing smaller up there like that. How's that? Is that better? I think that's better. I can kind of keep it persistent on the... Uh, on the screen. 1012.32270.3576. Boom. All right. Now, 886 feet. Clear that line. Start it again. Wee! Looking for 886. There we go. One zero four five point zero two seven. Oops, two seven zero point zero five two eight. There we go. It's looking pretty smooth, I think. So next line and we'll get another line right out about here want to do the next one it's clear on the yellow line again looking for 885 there it is and we're measuring backwards this time if i do this right where I go to the same point every time, the measurements should... It only measures in one direction in Google Earth, so... Gives me a good number either way. Distance to the threshold, that's all I care about. So in this number, we go to 1072.69 meters. 269.748. Other nice and smooth transition. There's our next line. Eight four. And a good worth. Start from the threshold measuring from the threshold. There we go and swing down. So we're past the last of the precision markers. Looking for eight eighty four. Eight eighty eight. Five. There, American, uh, there, okay. New point. This is 1,099.51 meters down the run line, and it is 269.4432 meters high. There's our next line. The next mock. Start to see the discoloration here. This is that faded line is the actual real life center line on the painted uh, on the the photo scenery and this is just the the one that they default put in this is why i think i'm going to not render not have the the sim do a default line i'm going to paint my own line so that this ain't there we don't get this this effect here where it's this offset not that hard to do Picked up a thing, thing over the past few streams. That's, well, that's good, man. That's what we're after. Yeah. So there, I mean, there are very, there's much shorter videos on uh, YouTube of people doing these things, but they're not, you don't, you don't see the repetition. You don't see the, the work in, in real time. And um, because of that, I think you kind of miss out on On s if you only see it once, it might not make that much sense. But you see me do it a dozen times or even more. And it'll be like, oh, I get how he's doing that. Or maybe 
different aspects of me doing a certain technique of something is, is going to be kind of what makes it click for you and be like, oh, I can totally do that. And that's kind of what I'm after. I want to, I want people to see that this is dumb easy, it, time consuming, yes, a labor of love, relaxing. Now I'm sitting here listening to some ATC. I'm, gonna, I'm about to go get a drink of water, you know, it's just relaxing. Yeah, this takes time. In fact, let's all do that. Let's take a quick water break, everybody. Take a quick, go grab yourself a little drink. Make it, for me, non-alcoholic, but uh, you guys do what you like. I'll be back in like one minute here with a nice fresh glass of ice water. Enjoy the ATC. We're back. Got a glass of water. Nice tall beverage. Ice cold water. Filtered, of course. Alright, back at it. Going for 882 feet. And we're closing in on halfway down the runway, everybody. You loyal, loyal people, you. Yeah, the journey. The journey is what's fun. Just getting to the finish line is important. It's important to actually make it to a finish line at some point and not just... That's that's another thing in life. It's really easy to start projects, hard, a lot harder to finish them. So I understand the urge. Like, I just gotta get, I just want to be done with this. I understand that. I totally do. But what you have to realize is that you're not necessarily going to get a quality product out of that. 882 is what we're looking for, right? Had kind of a, an exciting event this morning in my household. My number two child, my daughter, had her first swimming lesson today, this morning, at the YMCA. So she, she has it. We got a little Paw Patrol finger puppet here sitting there. One of the kids left that there. Another little dragon toy here. But, uh, yeah, had her first swimming lesson. So she is coming waterbound. Pretty exciting. She was definitely frightened, but uh, I think she'll get over that pretty quick. She's a little daredevil, that one. So I think once she gets comfortable, she's going to just take off in that water. She is fearless once she gets used to something. And we want to kind of get her in like a gymnastics program because she loves to hop and bounce around and stuff and do somersaults. She's only three years old, but she is a very fun, fun kid. It's going to be hard to keep up with. Charlie 
881 feet we're at. Remember, we started at 913. We're down to 881. It's 22 feet in. Wait. 32 feet in. <laughs> I skip one. One one eight six point six three. That's right. I think. So at, over many points, you can see the hump. The hump in the runway. It's definitely a slope, concave up. The concave up or concave down? Concave, concave down, right? It's like that. This is concave up. Con concave down, concave up. Anybody know? Ge geometry people. Simulator concierge, thank you so much, man. I appreciate your kind words and your uh, your uh, motiva motivating words as, as well. Keeps me going, man. Really is helpful. Have a great e rest of your evening, and uh, hope to see you on another stream soon, shortly. And Sticky Rice, hello to you. Sticky Rice. That is a heck of a name. Tell me more. It makes me, makes me want to know where you came up with something like that. Sticky Rice. 880 feet is what we're, the point we're looking for next. I'm pretty sure on this runway there's a point where they start going back up again. So we're kind of, it'll bottom out and then start heading back up. So it's kind of like we're going to do the same altitudes or elevations multiple times, some of them. All right, kind of right around 180 right now, looking for about where it goes from 181 to 180. And somewhere right here. There we go. Welcome to the stream. We're we're doing runway uh, runway profiles, which basically means we're setting the the elevation profile of this runway. And um, for those just joining, you can see as I go down this runway object. You can see these little yellow, little yellow circles with lines here. Those are each little points on this chart that I'm putting in that change the, the tel that define the slope of this runway, and they're all in one foot increments. So every little every little dot or line is a foot in elevation. Right now the runway is sloping downward, and every one of these lines is one f one foot lower that the runway gets, and I'm measuring this on Google Earth, which you see in the top right corner. And that is getting co measuring coordinates down the runway and putting it into the sim so that we get a kind of a close to realistic runway profile in terms of slope anyway. All right, 879 feet. So it started at 913, we're down to 879. A whole lot of little dots on that that chart. So a lot more to go. So it's a pretty high high fidelity runway profile, I would say, at the end of the day. We consider that the runway has a there's a 60 foot difference in elevation from the from threshold to threshold, but there is also a a bowed out low spot, a valley where it starts going back up a little bit again, not all the way back up to the top, but there will be some interesting curve to this, which you can only really get by doing it this way. 43.41 meters down the runway is 267.9192. So I'm measuring difference in feet in Google Earth. And I have another website open, a web page open that you can't really see. This is what it looks like, where I'm just changing this number every time. So now, now I'm going 878 will be the next one. And then getting the, the measurement in meters because these measurements in the sim are all in meters. It only takes meters. I can't change it in feet. So little numbers I'm putting in these uh, 
little boxes here are all meters. This is this one is meters down the runway. This is the elevation. So every time I add a new point, I'm changing its coordinates to feet meters down the runway. Wow. 1243.41 meters down the runway and then the altitude 267.6144 meters that's how you get another point it says this meter this one is too close to the next one what happened there Let's try this again. Might not have remeasured. I had a mismeasure. Yeah, I did. Okay, so this is actually 1269.54. There we go. That makes some more sense. There we go. I just used the same distance for both of them there. 877 is next. Now, here I'm going to go down till I get the 877, which luckily at this part of the runway is not very far away. There it is. Now we'll swing down the runway. Back to the threshold, click, and right, so now the distance is 1,291.62 meters, and the elevation is 267.3096. There we go. Little t close together little things. This is a short little section here. <coughs> Digit Driver suggested my channel. Oh, hooray, Digit Driver. Well, I suggest his channel. His channel. I like that guy. He's way more popular than me. But he's a Twitch guy. So his stuff doesn't won't live on into perpetuity like mine will here on YouTube. Slowly started learning how to create airports. You've come to the right place, my man. We are... This is very elementary stuff, the basics that we're going over here. But this is... Cambodia. Okay. I'm struggling with the taxi points on the runway. Sydney Airport runway 16 is the same. Okay. Interesting. So the taxi points, you mean the actual like lines? What, what what part of taxi points? I haven't really done a whole lot of that actually. If you look at my airport, you'll notice I have an air a taxiway aprons, but there's no there's no paint on my pack taxiways yet. And there's no taxiway points yet either. In fact, this is the only thing that I've done with anything taxiway anything so far is put that start right there <laughs> that's the only one so I have a long ways to go I I am going to be doing videos on how all that works when I get to it oh my gosh guys look this is the half point of the runway right here and we're almost there kind of see it here we're just about halfway down through the uh, the profile also all right, moving right along. We're on 876, I think is what I'm looking for now. Okay. There we go. 876. New point. Adding a new point. Yeah, this part is crazy tedious. It doesn't take a lot, like, too long, but it takes long. <laughs> this is not a fast process. Right, 875 is next. Looking for 875. There we go. All the way back down the runway to measure to that point so I can get the measurements. 
for how far away from the threshold the next point is, next foot of elevation changes, and this is 1,351 meters, 0 0.31, that is, 266.7. There we go. This is so smooth, this, this arch. I don't think I did it this, this detailed the last time, or this smooth, so this is looking really good. Pretty much connecting them together. The tag, okay, struggling with it. So I wish I had like a, a good a bit of advice I could give to you right now, but unfortunately I'm not at that point yet in my airport journey. So when I get to it, we will have some fun. Cause there's a couple, I will say this, there's, there's a reason that I don't have any painted lines on my taxiway yet. It's because they look like junk, I think in this simulator. And I want to change the way they look so that I can actually get kind of an accurate painted line on there. And I can get it one that has the black borders around it, the, the little black part. Some people have probably heard me say this over and over again, so I'm not going to get into it right now. But uh, that's why I haven't gotten there yet. It's the next, the, the next step, I guess you could say. But uh, I have to figure out how to... I don't know anything about creating texture files, so that's what it's going to kind of kind of require of me. So I want lines that look better than what the lines in the sim do. So I got to figure that part out. I wish I'm, I'm hoping somebody that knows how to do these things just sort of falls into my lap by me keep saying that I don't I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Maybe I should start po posting on forums or something like that. I'm, gl I'm glad you're right there with me on that. I feel exactly the same way. If you rush through this, it's we're, it's, we have to be happy with the product, right? And if you rush through it, we are always going to know that we cut a corner somewhere or something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to even potentially share this with with other people, knowing that I cut corners. Well said. Well said, Mr. Sticky Rice. Children have come in for the night. Eight seventy-three. So yeah, I've been telling people that this is super enjoyable. It's just relaxing. I certainly think it's true. But I want I want the average person to say, you know what? I know a little bit about my local airport. Maybe I'll go out there and and try my hand at uh, doing some of these simple things in the sim, like making better runways and taxiways. Or maybe their airport that they've tried out in the sim that they've maybe actually seen in real life or have real life experience with. Maybe, maybe well, shoot, maybe you're just a virtual pilot who flies in and out of a certain airport all the time. And you happen to know from your experience in the sim that the real world taxiways are not named the same as the ones in the sim. Maybe that's driving you nuts. It drives me nuts. Yeah, so, like, you know what? I can go in and fix that. But unfortunately, in this sim, if you want to change something like the name of a taxiway, you got to redo the whole entire airport. I will say this. It's not entirely true. There is a way to edit some simple things like the labels on taxiways without uh, completely starting from scratch like I am, I guess. But what you're going to do is there's another utility called Airport Design Editor, ADE. It's on that fsdeveloper.com website if you haven't seen that before. 
but that app makes it so you can actually load in from the sim there load all the assets in and do and edit them it's a 2d editor that's completely outside of the sim which is definitely better on your on your uh, hardware because it doesn't it's not rendering the entire sim like this is and it's creating some heat in this pc right now but uh but then you're not actually seeing kind of the real the fruits of your labor, I guess, in real time. I think it's really neat that you can, that this sim you can edit and do your design in real time. At least for the airport, the scenery editor, you can do that. I don't think for like airplane modeling and stuff like that, I don't, I don't think it would be what you would call real time editing. What are we on to? 871. Seems like I'm getting further away here. There we go. Okay. This is Charlotte Airport, Cage C L T that we're listening to, by the way. Ooh, this one got a little bit a little farther away. Make sure I put that incorrectly. 149. 1459. 188. Yep, that's right. It might be starting to change slopes again. Custom painted, yeah, so these lines are custom painted. The yellow ones here. I'm going to redo the center lines so that they actually match the real world center lines. So that'll be custom painted. I'm custom painting everything. I'm not doing the default painting. So those are one of the things that make the sim look like garbage. Just like the lighting. Which in my title here of this video actually says that I'm going to do some work on lighting. So you'll see me do some custom taxiway lights. I can do those really quick. Those are so super simple to do. But... Uh, Custom runway lighting is what I'm about to do after this. And I've done another video on that already, but it's like three hours long, maybe something like that. Two hours, three hours. So I want it. I don't know that I necessarily want to put it into this one. If I do, let's see, what, what would be the benefit of doing it again in this one? I guess just repetition. Yeah. Different people are not always going to see everything I do, so if I do them multiple times, you get the benefit of seeing it and really me driving it home. So maybe more people will see it if I do it more than once. Yeah, that one got a little closer together again. Sixty-nine. We're getting close to eight fifty-two. Oh, just a little over halfway down the runway. Oh, missing badly here. Looking for eight hundred sixty-nine feet. There it is. All right, next point. Work on my posture here. Ugh. Really slumping over. One four one five. Eight, four five. Good. And the altitude is two six four point seven one two. Oh, tower for the street fifty six forty five. Uh, IOS twenty left. Three six forty five. Short tower two point nine and trail company only one eight left. Land. Sorry, I turned off my Google Earth window. There we go. We are doing so well. 868 is what we're going to be looking at next. When we get down towards the end of this this uh, thing, it, they get much further apart. So it will go much further once we once faster, much faster when we get down towards the end of the runway here. 68. Swinging back down the runway again. 
So we got to the threshold. Oh no, don't. Okay. Good. All right, 868. Such small change, fractions of meters that we're changing here. We're now 1,540.41 meters down the runway. 264.5664 is the altitude. The elevation. I'm not really going to do a big reveal on what it looks like until I get the last stinking point then. 867. Yep, cannot rush. Labor of love, artwork. We have to, to do it the way we do it. So if we did it out in any other way, it would, it would seem like we were cutting corners. Oh, look, 867. Here we go. 1,574.5 meters down the runway. 264.2616 meters high. There we go. Another, another line added. 866 meters is what we're looking for. And I'm throwing every one of these numbers into a converter so I can convert meters, or sit, feet into meters. So I'm measuring in increments of feet. And editing the Microsoft measures in meters. So fractions of meters, though. Very, very, th was that the third decimal place I think it's me measuring to. 72 meters, so 263.9568. Yeah, it goes to the third decimal place, which is thousandths. Thousandths of a meter, which... What is a thousandth of a meter? A centimeter? A millimeter? Yeah, millimeter. <clears throat> so we're we're talking we're down to millimeters here in in accuracy. Eight hundred and sixty five. Accurate to the millimeter, guys. You've never seen such fidelity. Really, it all comes down to just how accurate. Google Earth's measurements are. Because if those aren't accurate, then none of this is accurate. The next number is... <coughs> I'm losing my voice. 1,645.68 meters. 263.652 meters. There we go. Oh, it's starting to, starting to bend back up again. I'm going to keep the, the voice strong here. Oh, 964. Right. 864. Right, so 864. So I'm looking for 864. There it is. Oops. Down the runway we go. Looking for the threshold. So it's starting to bow back a little bit. Eight hundred and sixty-three meters. 
1,711.49 meters, 263.0424, oh. yeah. We're so far down the runway, we're starting to, okay, picking up the new precision approach lines. 862 meters, 10 meters to go in terms of the bottom. Altitude. Shorter than a one eight left. We're gonna do something a little bit differently. I'm gonna send you out eastbound. The east side controllers are gonna climb you up and then take you across the top and that'd be a hard quarter at uh, like forty five hundred feet. And then we'll get you a bonus run, otherwise it's too much of a delay for you. Oh, in this case it's one two uh one two eight point three two, twenty eight thirty two is where you're gonna go. The satellite frequency for Charlie Approach. Alright, 1753.32 meters. 262.7376 meters high. 8, We're moving right along. 861 meters or feet. Sorry. Gosh. <laughs> If anybody has any questions, that is exactly what I'm doing right now. I can break it down and backtrack a bit. One thousand seven hundred ninety-five point zero seven meters. Two hundred sixty-two point four three two eight elevation. Yeah, it's definitely concave and back. That didn't just happen. I didn't just do that. This thing's super strong, by the way. I can knock it with just about anything. It's it's, it's not going anywhere. Concave and back up again. See, we're closing in on the end of the runway. That is exciting. 860 meters or feet. Gosh, I keep saying the wrong thing. I'm in the wrong measurements, Chris. Come on. Oh. As I said, as we get down towards the end of the runway, they start getting further apart. This next one is a lot further apart than what we the last several that we've been doing. This point is further from the left. Get starting to get further away. Got a little bit bigger. Some of these were getting tiny down here. Trying to space out a little bit more. Does it look like I missed one in here? Quickly across all west on Romeo, hold for two three, America 2934. 859, I think we're on to now. Oh, that one got changed quick. Oh, I see. 860. Adding a new point. 
1,899.08 meters. 261.8232. This is, I like how smooth this has turned out. This is nice. Make it bigger. See, it's not quite as smooth. It's not really zoom it out, but not bad. We are getting there. Now I'm getting close to the other runway end, but you might be wondering why can't I measure from that end? Well, all of these are a reference to the very first point that I put in, which is this one way out here. So these, this distance is from that point. And so every single thing has to be measured from the runway 5 left approach end. 1,967.26. Getting further apart, guys. That's a good sign. 261.5184 meters. Blue Street 5240, flight heading 190, runway 18 center. That interval is getting bigger than these intervals. Starting to flatten out. Alright, 857 meters or feet. <laughs> Every time I call it the wrong thing. This one will be in here somewhere. Two thousand forty two point three three meters, two hundred sixty one point two one three six meters. Look at these, these are getting large. Eight hundred and fifty six feet. So the new point, fine tune it, 2165, it's actually further down the runway than where I placed it, point three two. 60.9088, look at how big that interval is versus some of these. Are getting much flatter. 855 feet. Remember, the runway end is only 852 feet, I think. So we're really close to the zone. 
keying in on that. Maybe it doesn't concave back up. Start going back uphill on the side. And uh, Blue Street 5214. Uh, sorry for all of this. I do appreciate your patience. Uh, next rod was just about to touch down. Once they're passed, I'll be taking you across. Anybody that's on the trolley is going to be waiting for you. Uh, Alright. Just wanted to sort of warm you up there with all that. 2,337.29. Look how far that one went. My goodness. 260.604. Look at that interval right there. That is a long one. See, it gets really long at the end of the runway. We're almost done. Eight hundred and fifty-four feet. This one's the end of the thousand footers. So anybody that's still watching, I really want you to see the payoff here. We're almost there. We're almost to the payoff. Where we see what this time and energy gets us. What the product is here. Almost there. Oh, that one slipped down a little bit more. Got like two feet left. You're not at 1836, turn left to Whiskey 3, Captain Zia. Whiskey, Sierra, Hope Shore. Whiskey, Sierra, Hope Shore, the one eight. We're on 853 now. This might be the last one, actually. Sierra, cross from the one eight center, taxi straight ahead on the mic to contact us. All right. Two thousand six hundred twelve point three five meters. Two hundred fifty nine point nine nine four four. Feet, meters, feet, whatever. I'm going to do one more point, guys. When it goes from 853 to 852. Last one. And then we've reached the payoff point. Boom. The last one. 2,697.6 meters. 6.896. That is the wrong number by far. Yeah, 259.6896. The last little, however much, is flat. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. So, at this airport, we do not do flat runways. We do curved runways. Let's see just how curvaceous this runway is here. Go down, find the air traffic control tower. Squat down right on top of it. 
Let's hop back right about there. Inspector mode. High point is up here. Look at the slope down, 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 down. That's pretty awesome. That's a good slopey runway. He says snare, snare 17 there for a second. That would have been weird. And you can tell from here that this runway goes down. And then I'm back up a little bit. That's a sloped runway. So when you're coming in for approach. Come in and see it like this. But look, when you're rolling down the runway, because of all those points I've put in, you don't see any real jagged edge and bumpiness. You're not going to notice a whole bunch of bumps in the runway. Because I put all those stinking points on this thing and made it nice and smooth. Uh, Google Earth up here. There we go. We don't need that stuff. No bumps. We'll wait till we get to the end, and we'll look down the other side. That's smooth. Now we got this weird thing here, which I don't know why it does that. It's never done it before. We'll take a look at it, though. Then from this end of the runway, see where it kind of flattens out here a bit. But everything else is slopey, slopey, slopey. You can tell that it really goes uphill. Love it. And it's kind of the same story with this part of the taxiway as well, where it, after here, it starts to really fall off, and it, it does the same right now. So, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but that's pretty good, man. That's This is the part where you get there and be like, you know what? That runway does kind of look like that. That's the effect we're going for. Let's see just how much higher this is the point that it's at when we get to that end. And I, as I scroll to the right, look how much lower it is. Like that, all that altitude difference. Comes back up. Down, 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 down. It just goes down, down, down.
Hopefully you guys can tell what I'm looking, what I'm talking about here in terms of the slope of this runway. It just goes down. That is a run, look, look, look at the side here. It starts up here and just goes down, 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 down. Much lower on that end. That's what we want. Blue Street, 5135, on the visual line left. Blue Street, 5135, solid tower, wind 190 at 7, runway 185. Point left, red line, Blue Street, 51, uh, 35. Left at 1577, to right at Charlie. Alright, how far in? Two hours and 15 minutes, alright. Two hours, 15 of runway slope madness. And it's 60 feet of drop from that end to that end. It's, it's a pretty, pretty good amount, I think. All right, uh, I want to show you one thing before we move on. Maybe we can call it a night, I don't know. I'm going to show you what this runway looks like. The slopes on this runway is way different. So, this had not nearly as much. Look at that. That is what the profile of this runway looked like. Way fewer dots. And because it doesn't, the, al the altitude change isn't that much. So, it's much flatter, but it also has a sort of a wacky kind of humpiness to it in the middle. That uh, really isn't much over the course of the whole runway. Doesn't really change altitude much. So you don't see quite as much character. It doesn't have quite as much character. But you do see the altitude changes in there. A little bit of it. So that's that. So you can definitely see I've got the marks here, but they're going up. Some go down, some go up. And then this part is all just 100% flat. Nice job on that, that part of the runway, guys. That is so flat. And this side of the runway, very, very flat. It's, which makes sense. It's, it's through a runway intersection here, so it's got to be kind of flat here. It's just a little adventurous through there, but it's not a big change. This one is a big change, where it's just kind of straight down. That's <laughs> right much, a little bit more character. So yeah, that runway's a bear to climb up. They do a, a they do like a 5k, 10k race on it every year, where it starts down on the the two, three right end, way down here. 5k is going up. And I think the 5k you go up, then you turn. You go up, then you turn around, come back. Yeah, that's right. Maybe it's you go up, and you come down this way. I think then it's done. Then the 10k is you go up, down, back. But that first climb up that hill, man. Whoo, that's gotta be a that's gotta be a beast. That's gotta be not much fun. I haven't done it. I've worked it once or just one time, what, twice maybe. I've worked while they were having that that run. It was not easy. All right, we've had a hundred and ninety-five views of this video already so I call that a success seven likes 
We can do better than seven likes, right guys? Like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, everybody, please. Like and subscribe. I shouldn't even have to say that. We've gotten two subscribers. So we're doing somewhat decent with that. Up to 60 now. That's exciting. 100. One way to get to 100, there, there will be a party. There will be a party thrown of some sort. I don't know what it's going to be. 100 is going to be fun. <clears throat> I was at 140-ish or something on Twitch before I made this switch. So, almost halfway to that. The more you get, the, the faster your acquisition rate goes. Okay, so. Enough of all this. We've got these runways. And now we got to do something with them. Okay, so turn in the unlocking now. Actually, what I want to do is I want to hide this. No, no, no. I didn't want to do that. I don't want to hide it. Or do I want to hide it? Like, I don't know. There we go. What I definitely want to do is take that orange lines off. There we go. I like I like this look a lot, in fact. Okay, so. Lighting! Green line off, the orange light off, all the other lines off. This is a runway that has no lights. Currently. What I could do, what we often do do, I said do do, is we go to our, in our runway object, which is this one right here, runway 5 left, T3 right. This is the actual object, not a folder, it's the object. You can tell because we got that whole terraforming thing. If I do show profile editor, it's going to be like, hey, look, there's your profile. Sweet, that's my profile. Uh, I don't need to do anything to save it. It's all saved in there. In fact, this is a good time to go down and to the bottom here and say, Save Scenery. Make sure I don't lose all that work. All right. And close that. We're done with terraforming for now. Lights. So what we could do is say, Hey, I want to put some edge lights on this baby. Let's do some high-intensity edge lights. And in a second, it will load them all in. Okay, they're loaded in. There you go, starting here at the end, you will get... Oh, put threshold lights in too. How nice. And then you get these edge lights. Notice down here they're white on one side, yellow on the other side. Huh. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know, Chris. Why is that? So the last, I think it's 2,000 feet of the runway it's supposed to do that? Or is it 3,000 feet? Still showing me yellow. Yeah. So we'll say it's 3,000 feet, I guess. There's a 3,000 foot marker. One thousand. One thousand feet. Is that really one thousand feet? That doesn't seem right. Yeah, five hundred. One thousand. Fifteen hundred. Two thousand. 2,500, 3,000. Okay, so it is just 2,000 feet down the runway. That one's still yellow for some reason. Okay. So, we got these lights put in here. 
that are just randomly placed. Not randomly placed, they're evenly spaced. But when working with the apron of the runway, you see these little spots right here. These are where the lights are actually placed. Now, these are incredibly close, I will say, to being in the right spot. It's an embedded light. So kudos to them. They got it actually kind of right this time. Pretty darn close to being in the right spot. But we don't want them to be close. We want them to be in the right spot. I want them in the actual right spot. And there's no way to offset them. So... It shows that the airport actually did a really good job of spacing these out on this runway. Uh, it gets off by a little bit, gradually a little bit more as we go, I guess. So anyway, we're going to place these manually, by hand. This is a really good skill to learn, how to manually place lights. So, I'm going to go back over here and he said, none. There are no none runway lights selected. I'll do the easy edge first, the one that doesn't have any other taxiways intersecting it. I'm going to do this in three, <coughs> three sections. Alright, so what I want to do is... Runway edge lights FAA. So I'm gonna put airport lighting A. Colors and light spacing. All right. Two hundred feet between lights. It's supposed to be. Let's see here on Go the old googly Google Earth. Let's go ahead and measure. <laughs> we have a tools. Let's do it. So this is a light right here. Let's measure to the next one. Show me in feet. That is 196 feet. Says Google Maps. <laughs> so that's that. Well, what happens if we measure to the next one? Also 196 feet. Well, eh. 194 feet. So, they're not perfectly spaced in real life, I guess. That's the bottom line. Cer they certainly don't do exactly the same thing here. Alright, first light. Is that really the first light? No, there's got to be one more here somewhere. It's like right there. Yep. It is right in there. So what I can also do for this is go to my lines, select this one, hide it. There's that light right there. Visual 
Anyway, I'm going to look on this website here. I'm going to... 200 feet, there's supposed to be a part. Edge lights are yellow on the last 2,000 feet, or half of the runway length, whichever is less. So, I should be able to go to the 2,000 foot marker, which is, again, right here. And every light past it is white, white, white. That's what I'll do. Sorry with that one. Okay, so up to this one, I'm going to do as one row. And here's how we do it. So let's turn that. Oh, let's get that light off. I haven't done any lights yet for this, so. It's just going to be a lights, 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 lights. In fact, let's go ahead and unhide that one. Close the lines up. All right, selecting the runway folder, because I'm going to put a new object in. This object is going to be object type, light row. I'm going to add, and it puts the light row object in, in that folder. I come up here and snap to vertices. Say runway edge, white, white. Start here. Center of that little yellow circle and work our way back. Center of that little circle, work our way back. Center of the circle, work our way back. Center of the circle, work our way back. Center, work our way back. This is an especially good method to use on taxiway lights, edge lights, because you will get, uh oh, What? I'm not going to work. What are you talking about? It's the last one of those. Okay. Yeah, that's better. So now every one of these little vertices I set, it puts a light there. Turn the apron back on. See sort of these evenly spaced little yellow marks. So why did I just do that much instead of the whole runway? Well, these are different these are gonna be different kind of lights than the middle section. And the end section will be different, have different attributes also. So I didn't want to do it all one way. This is me doing being smarter this time than I have on other ones. <coughs> What's wrong? Time to go? You get, get some rest? No. Not yet? Okay. I don't know if your mommy's going to feel the same way, but... What is it? What, you, what is this, dude? Oh. It says Honda Jet. <laughs> the co-pilot. There we go. That's good stuff. Maybe I'll put a marker in this video so people can know where the actual runway lighting part starts, where the runway slope part starts and ends. Alright, 
So that's one section of lights. Say edge lights. Call this. So I'm gonna for organization purposes, I'm gonna click on the light row object, go down here to this little one with a down arrow on it, and I'm gonna create a new group. Based off of that, I'm gonna rename it Edge Lights. I just put lights on that one. Maybe I'll just call it lights. Kind of keep the convention. Lights. There we go. Now yeah, open the lights folder and that light row that we just did is already in there. So with the lights folder selected, not the light object. Actually, it doesn't really matter. It's the light object or the... We're going to do another... Well, edge white light, snap to vertices. Another a separate object. the other way. Not that it really matters, but now i got to get down the runway. Let's see my little... Little dots. My little vertices. Kind of keeping them right in the center. Here, just about to the halfway point of the runway. We're past the half point, halfway point of the runway. Now, I don't think that this is it's so imp important to be absolutely perfect on this. You just got to get in that circle, kind of near the center, so that when the sim goes and places the actual object. It's taking its sweet time doing. So we've got to kind of figure out where the 2,000 foot mark is. 500, 1,000 foot, 1,500. That's right, dude. Honda Jet. Tower American 1729, visual 18 right. 18 left, sorry. So it's already passed it. Tower wind 210 at 5. Right. Too far, guys. I'm going to right click, remove. Select that last node, remove. That node, remove. Alright. That one's done. And I'm gonna do add another one. Same thing, we'll say white white. Snap to vertices. One there. One there. It's kinda tough because it actually keeps moving a little bit after I finish. Last one. Oh, one more. A 
was the last one. It's me. Alright, so three runway objects. Three runway light light row objects. See the break in it? There's the break. And there's another break down here. Down there. Oh jeez. Oh, congrats a lot. <laughs> I had on the whole time. Uh, okay, well, we'll change it for the, for the next one. Right. Let me read this. Excuse me, sir. Alright, deleted them all. Let's try it again. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right, so I'm gonna start here on the runway edge. Just to make this easy, I'm going to turn the apron off so I can see through it. Light rose object is selected. And the selected the lights folder, which you won't have unless you already have something in it. I've messed up, so I have to do it again. There's the first light. But I'm going to do it. I know how I'll do it this time. Sir. It's a thousand foot. Two thousand foot. Oh. First light there. Okay. Ground point nine. All right. So let's type white light. Snap to vertices. There's the first one. To go away from the middle of the runway on both sides this time. That way I don't duplicate any efforts. sure I can see them all these vertices kind of evenly placed it's nice to do when I select this so you can see the red dots instead of yellow dots good all right so that is one object one light row and come down to this side on the 2,000 foot marker which is right here and start with that light. Space red dots, good. And we'll do the last row, which will start at the node passy. I did it inside out this time. I was smart. Savvy. There we go. Start there. Uh, do 
So as I go down the runway, the, run, the actual surface is getting closer to the camera here because the altitude is getting higher. Kind of messing with me. Very much like a steering wheel. Yoke, steering wheels, same kind of thing in an airplane. After I scroll, it the sim moves the camera a little bit. I gotta kind of wait for it to stop. Or else you get a little bit of drift in where you're trying to place these. Oh, good. There's the last one. All right, and that light row. Evenly placed red dots. They are. Okay. So that was the smart way to have done this without having Google Earth up over the screen the entire time. Well done, everyone. I feel like some people are just watching, being sitting there. Like the only couple of viewers here are sitting there back. It was like, he's got that dang thing up on the screen. And he's going to realize it at the last second and he's going to feel like an idiot. But I'm just going to sit here and watch. All right, so let's go to nighttime and inspector mode and look. Oh, they're blue. How did they get blue, everybody? Hey, Isaac. Good Isaac, evening to you, sir. Another New Yorker. No, you're not a New Yorker. Um, another Northeasterner. Alright, so that works. Well, I done something wrong. These are all showing up as blue. What have I done? I don't think I did my job in defining them. That looks pretty solid, doesn't it? Nice line of lights there. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, this is the problem. So I didn't do the defining of the, the objects here. Watch this. And now the lights move. Check this out. This will be pretty cool. So the middle section here, I'm going to turn the things off. Watch what happens when I do this. I'm going to, they're going to become white. Well, the lights are white now. And when I watch the spacing, spacing changed just a little bit. There we go. So everything works. Okay. So there we go. Whole line of white lights down that one side of the runway. Well, that isn't very straight, is it? A couple of these are kind of jagged. What has gone on here? Sephiroth, you're back. Good to see you, man. Isaac, I'm doing great today, man. It's, it's It was a good day. It's a good day. It's been a good long weekend. Back to work tomorrow. Back to the grind. Right, some some has gone awry here. Let's turn this off. 
couple of these lights are kind of wonky. That's in the right spot. That's in the right spot. I don't know, man. They look good to me. <clears throat> okay. So, one of the things we talked about is that the last 2,000 feet are supposed to appear yellow. Well, those all look white. Do they not? It's just the, the slope of everything that kind of made it look screwy. It's fine to me. Never mind this cliff here. That's not my fault. I don't know why it's there. It'll probably disappear the next time I load the sim. Hey, there we go. Alright, cool. So the last 2,000 feet are supposed to appear yellow. Yep, getting some work done. I got some, some work done on it. Was it yesterday or the day before? I don't remember. Getting lots of work done. It. So I... You missed it, Sephiroth. I sloped this whole stinking runway. It looks beautiful now. Now we got lights. So, I gotta... Alright. How do we make it so the last 2,000 feet are yellow? So, if you remember... Actually, I don't remember how to do this. Oh, how do I do it? I don't... I don't know, man. I did this with different lights. Let's, let's go do this with different lights. Let's do something different here, so I don't... I don't want to try to show you something that I don't actually know how to do yet. Because then you'll just see a few minutes of me just making an idiot out of myself trying to figure it out. Alright, so let's do these threshold lights. I'll show you the the problem. I've shown this before in the past, so please excuse me. The problem that we have in the sim is that when selecting the runway objects, you go to pavements, I think it is. No. You go lights. And you do edge lights. It puts these threshold lights in. One, two, three, four, five of them. One, two, three, four, five of them. Four of which are embedded on this side, four of which are embedded on that side. It's because they have a runway object over it and they don't want to overlap. So, here's the problem. There's one, two, three, four of them in real life on each side. One, two, three, four four of these on the on each side. So they're not in the right spot. Uh, not only that, but if you put like primary approach light systems in, you'll say like, like an LSAF 2 system. That's interesting. Didn't do it at all. We'll mess with these later. Uh, which part was it? Pavements. I turn the approach lights off. What are you doing? Now it should be gone. It should not come back. Let's save this before I get too carried away here. Okay, so I think it was pavements, primary blast pad. It was overrun.
Oh shucks, I don't know. <laughs> now I can't figure out how he did this. Okay, well it doesn't matter. And also we've got these this bar of green lights that has to go across here. <clears throat> so these lights are wrong. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. So we'll turn the edge lights off because we don't need the edge lights again. Gets rid of all that. So I'm going to take a little bit of a... I can do apron object right here. Yeah, dude. I'm doing building, just like you said. Alright, so side of the runway. I can do this. So turn all this on. What did I just do? I don't know what I just did. Right click, add point. Oh no, where did it add a point? Did it add a point? It did not. Just click on the node. Dude, you're, you're moving. Stop moving, Aaron. Screwing me up. Sorry, uh, push the right button here. Uh, 140 on the heading, and we're switching. Adios. Alright, it's not working. I'm trying to add points, and it's not adding my points. Why isn't it adding a point? This happens sometimes. Alright, forget it. Didn't like it anyway. Do this the real way. Good way. Okay, so the apron, this, is that color, this one's going to be a slightly different color apron. So selecting the runway object, or the runway folder, so if this object that I'm about to make goes in the right spot. There we go. Turn that apron back on. Make sure I can stretch this so that they overlap a little bit. Right. Capacity to 215. It's my standard. I'm going to make this asphalt, go to the material editor, taxiway, asphalt, let's make this run by asphalt, not that there's really any difference. Draw the surface off. Now where is this mystery apron piece? There's a couple spots where I have my test pieces. I'm trying to find the last one. That one on the... Is that it? I guess it is. Echo, Romeo. 
might have hit it, to be honest. I think I had another one. I like that one. Guess I don't need this one anymore. Alright. This is fun. It's right in there. That off. I'm going to try to get as close as I can to that color as possible. Coloration. How's that look? Good enough for me. So right click, copy properties. Let's unhide that little piece. Case properties. Oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Okay, I like that better. Alright, now we're gonna just move this baby out of the way. Alright, so I've got my little, my little piece here. Almost did something really bad. <laughs> Worked on a left hand today. Spent quite a while practicing left hand lead signals. Remember. Choke down on the stick. Choke down on the stick. Don't get too far up that stick. There's a choke down. Not that far. But still, back. Be in the back end of the stick. Put that beefy part up in the front. Slowly getting better. Left hand lead singles. Good stuff. Isaac's a drummer, like me. We talk about these things. Alright, so let's. Guess we're hiding? No. Hiding these aprons? There we go. Okay. All right, light rose again. <laughs> what happened, buddy? <laughs> Johanna Steinmetz, hello, welcome uh, to the stream. Good to have some new some new faces in here. <laughs> Sorry, my son is flipping out. I don't want to go to bed. He don't want to. <laughs> Well, 
Cross 62, 24, turn right, heading 240, then contact park today. 764, wind 206, fighting 190, runway 180 center, clear safe. Okay, crisis averted. Whew. For now. So we got some drummer. I've got drummer talk here, man. That's 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 how this that's how the snare seventeen stream should be. We should have some drummer talk. Yeah, not just uh not just flight sim stuff. Some drummer talk. By the way, like and subscribe, guys, if you haven't already. I always forget to say that. Okay, light row. Going to another light row. Back into lights. Add. Light row there. And there. Well, hmm. Yeah, let's do it that way. Okay, so this light row is of type threshold red. I'm not going to do a snap to vertices. Try to figure out how I measured this before. I will bring up Google Earth for this. I try to get an idea for how much space is in between these lights. This says 10 feet. Okay, 10 feet in between each one. 10 feet in between each one. Okay. 10 feet is about 3 meters, right, guys? I'm going to have to do a conversion. I need a better number. Three point zero four eight. Okay, so up here in the spacing between, I'm going to go three point zero four eight because it's in meters. So it should give me four lights. There's the fourth one. Okay, so I'm going. This one is not quite in the right spot. Let's get the sneaking light out of the way. Okay. Uh, Alright, I like that better. Okay. Now I'm going to go kind of a twilight. I want to be able to see these lights on. Give my heading. Zero four six, we'll say. I do zero four six. It points them. Tell. Okay. 
Mile 61, 45, turn right, heading 240, then contact Clark today. 145, good. Alright, so what I really want to do is take that light row. Pacific 642, traffic ahead will turn west, wind 210. And turn it 90 degrees. The other way, so I have to add 270 to this. 316. Should be correct. Spectre mode, those lights should load in, facing me. But they face this way, don't they? Oh, good. The wrong way. <laughs> it's the wrong way. Well, at least I know they're evenly spaced. Something that I wasn't able to do on the other runway, so I'll have to redo those too. There we go. Alright, so subtract 180 from that, and I've got 136. There we go. So this is a new method. I'm going to duplicate it. Now we have a duplicate of that. Now I'm going to swing it on over here. Shrink down. So just like that. All right, and we have special lights for the red ones, at least, and lights really for each. And you can only see them from the other direction. It's the lights, you can only, the actual emitting lights, you can see the objects, but they're not emitting any light on this side, that's what you want. Directional lights. Look at that, without, with those edge lights on, you can really see the slope of the runway. Oh my gosh, I have the thing up again. I'm sorry guys. Ugh. Yeah, you heard, you heard Cranky Boy. Cranky Boy's feeling better. He lost one of his pup finger puppets, his Paw Patrol finger puppets, and he's really upset about it. He gets very upset about these things. But his sister knows where they are, so his sister's going to go help him find them. It's nice when they work together. All right. You guys missed the whole thing. I'm sorry, guys. I'm terrible at this. Super cheap Mapex. Mapex makes some good stuff, Zephyrus. Stuff with strings. Okay, just messing around. Drum sets are fun, man. What kind of set do you have, Isaac? I guess that's the question. What brand? What, what? And then marching snares. What kind of, what set of, uh, what brand of marching snare do you guys use? See the, can you guys see this? I think you can. The white lights here, the slope of the runway. They're not quite as bright as they go down. They go noticeably down. American 2799 Charlotte Tower, runway 18 left, Anyway. Yeah, when you got kids, they whine. So this is what I made. It's these lights here. Sorry, I kind of screwed up in showing you guys. Because I had the stinking Google Maps thing on again. So let's go back to daytime so I can see you again. And you guys can see also. Wow, it's really dark. If your screen's really dark, you probably couldn't see those red lights very well. 
We're going to do these other little tiny green ones. And now if we notice when we look in here that there's two, two of the green lights for every red light. So that means that I have to take the number that I use for these, for the spacing of the red lights and just have it. Actually, I'm going to have to turn off this apron too. Like, no, we gotta get, do I need to? I think I do. It's Taxiway Hotel. Turn it off. There we go. All right, so another light row. Make sure I'm in the right group again. Add. This is of type threshold green. Uh, has heading. So I'm going to do 316. Anyway, so we're going to start two points here. One point there. What just happened? Where am I? Oh my gosh, I'm lost. I don't know where I am. I'm in the middle of the airport. This is weird. Thirteen inch. Tiny, tiny little drums. No offense. Stop moving. Still drifting. See, my mouse is drifting. I'm not moving it. There it goes. And we'll do a line all the way down to this one. Now I want to select this light. Spacing was 3048. So. One, five, two, four. Yeah, I needed a math check here, guys. Nobody else got that, I hope. 1.524. All right. Look at that. Nailed it. Now the real test. Did I put the lights in the right direction? I did. Okay. Apron on. Apron on. Taxiway on. Inspector on. Oh, oh, my lights. Where are my lines? Okay, there's my lines. Yay, green lights. We did it, everybody. Those are, and that are evenly, like perfectly evenly spaced. Come to the other side and you get red. It's got to be 14. I would think it's 14 because I think there's, they think they come in 14 and 15.
like this stick is almost 13, like 12 and a half inches or something like that. Ralph Hardiman. You guys use Ralph Hardiman? What kind of sticks do you guys use? Big Firth, Ralph Hardiman. It's all like rubbing off. I don't use stick tape when I practice at home, so. Yeah, little guy having a, a little sister that helps is is a is huge. Pearl Championships, man. I love me pearl snares. Oh my gosh. Pearl drums are the best. That's what we marched in Vanguard. They they marked Dynasty now. Yuck. So sorry for those guys. I think you can see the red from here. Same drill, let's save. Apron off, apron off. Canyon lines are off. Apron off. Actually, I guess we didn't really need that apron off. Let's get that in there. Well, you can see how much the, ele the, the elevation's changed. Because all these nodes are so high above the ground now. <laughs> that is interesting. Maybe that'll fix this. So I select this taxiway. Is it locked? Maybe it won't fix it. It's moving all by itself. I'm not doing anything. So far, that little break has not come back. Did I maybe fix it? <sighs> that would be nice. I think I fixed it. Do I still have the crazy slope? I'll say that the sim is actually uh, performing pretty darn well right now. It's not chugging like it usually does when I do all this stuff. Still sloping. Like it does. Very good. And that big old piece is gone. Nice. All right, I feel accomplished. I feel like we've done something here today, gentlemen and ladies. I hope you all feel as accomplished as I do right now. Get down next to a road, and it makes road sounds. Down next to a runway. Makes runway sounds. Anyway, we're here about lights. 
You don't like Ralph's? The paint makes your hands slip. Okay. I actually don't have that problem. Roger Carter's. I hear about Roger Carter's are really, really uh, popular on the left, on the, on the right, the right, the, the wrong coast, <laughs> the east coast. But uh, yeah, Ralphies are are very popular on the west coast, the best coast, aka. Uh, let's see, because Ralph Hardiman was a Vanguard guy. All right. Don't let me forget to turn the stinking Google Earth thing off. Because I'm measuring lights again. Again, it's 10 feet. Okay, good. Same spacing, fewer lights. Fewer lights on this side because it is not a, a, a category three ILS approach. And uh, it has a Mauser system instead of an ALSEF system. So you get different lighting configurations when you have different amount, uh, different approach lights. All right, so into the editor, Back to lights again. Going to add a light row. Starting there. Ending there. Done with it. Type. Threshold red. Spacing 3.048. Four lights. Excellent. And now we will actually got to make sure the lights face the right way before I do this. Well, they face somewhere. Three hundred sixteen. Is that the right number? It is. Okay. All right. So we got that in there. I do a duplicate. A little thingy in there. Slide it on over. Rock it on over. Still being moved by the sim. Stop moving the scenery. It, it's moved. Ah. <laughs> the Google Earth thing was still up. Um, so did we use Ralph Hardiman's when I marched? I don't. You know what? I don't know who that was. I don't know that there was ever two years in a row where I marched with the same stick. I think we... I'm trying to remember now. I think we marched Hardiman's... No, in 2003, we marched Casella's. They're the brown, the brown sticks, the Vic Firth. We used Vic Firth. We were sponsored by them. But I think we marched Casella's. Let's see, Vic Firth 
Casella, left, which, left, which I don't left, think left, they left, make left, anymore. Bigbird.com. Right grip for every set of hands. Just show me your stinking sticks, man. What is all this? Show best sellers. It's showing me t shirts. Uh. Artists. Browse artists. Jim Casella. I don't think he's actually one of their artists anymore. I think he went to. To, uh, innovative Percussion. What are they called? Like MS3s or something like that, I think? Yeah, I think they're MS3s is what they're called now. The MS3 stick, which used to be called a Cas Jim Casellas. I have them here. I got them around somewhere. I still have the brown ones. They're not brown anymore, but they used to be painted brown. We used those, and I think we used Hardiman's the other year. But in high school, I used Silver Fox sticks. I think we marched this stick at one point. Yeah, I think that was it. Maybe Casella's also on you. Uh, we change Probably sticks a lot. A lot of it just depends on what, what's available, like what you can actually get your hands on. MS3s are all right. They, uh, the, the biggest difference I notice in sticks when I use them, when I change them, is oftentimes has to do with, like, the buzzing, like, just the, if they're really top heavy, then they, can, they tend to not rebound as much. But if they're lighter at the tip, then they'll they'll kind of buzz a little bit different, and so that's I don't know how important that is to anybody, but that's what I notice. American eleven eighty six for left heading one four zero. One four zero over the park. Green. American twenty seven eighteen, wind two zero zero at four, runway one eight left, click and take. Oh, I don't like that. Put on iron, have a good night. This basically just doesn't look right for some reason. Do you use the innovative Jim Casellas or the the? Well, I, I guess obviously you would have had to because you definitely didn't use the Vic Burt Jim Casellas.
Go to departure. There we go. But we don't have hey, green lights yet. Oh, I think we do. Okay. Yay, green lights. Yay, red lights. That's what we like to see, guys. Green here, red down there. Right, I'm going to have to try to figure out how to do these double sided okay. lights. I'll do that on a different time, on my own time. Once I get it working, I'll do it on video, on stream. All right, I think we've reached a good quitting point. A lot of work done, guys. I didn't really put any new, too many, like really anything in new, way of new pavement down. But we did a really important thing of getting this runway slope locked in. Did some, did uh, half of the runway edge lights on one side and we got threshold lights installed. On both ends. So yeah, the innovative sticks, definitely. Yeah, I don't know what those are. I don't even know what those are like. I never tried them. I had never actually. I don't know if I've ever played a, a pair of innovative percussion marching sticks. Never had a reason to, and that's kind of go with what I'm used to. So we've actually there was some of these that we had. The Vic Firths, you can see I've got it all, it's all worn out here. Paint's kind of, kind of come off. But uh, they actually said, like, Santa Clara Vanguard on them. And, uh, so there's something else that was different about them. But yeah, they, they put, put a little extra stuff on there for drum corps that they're sponsoring. All right, I'm very happy with this. Yes, I know the lines aren't paint, painted on for some stinking reason, but I don't really care right now. All right, good, good stuff. So, adding a little uh, elevation data to the airport. A little beginning terraforming there. That's a runway profile. We did some more threshold and uh, edge lighting. We did three set three groups of edge lights, as we're going to do ones that are yellow on one side and ones that are not yellow on one side. I have to do presets for those still.
and there's going to be kind of another two two different types of runway lights that I haven't done yet at all, and that's the embedded edge lights, and then the embedded edge lights with yellow on one side. So the white whites and the white yellow. Over here, I've done the runway edge lights already, but they're all just white white. And I didn't do different groups either, so I'm going to have to redo all that. Let's do another batch, but it's, it's really quick. Once you have the actual uh, the actual presets, it's so quick to do light rows for, for those kind of things. So there we go. We zoom out. We look at the airport. It probably, from this angle, doesn't look all that different than when we started today. So for that, I apologize. I know I kind of screwed up with the, the, the what I had on the screen a lot of the times. Oh, unpitched, like unmatched? Yeah, the, the sticks. You get unmatched ones. Like, I used to actually go to drum stores. You could go to Guitar Center, or we had this, we had a actual percussion stores. West, a couple of them on the West Coast that we'd go to. Or you just go through bags and bags of them, just like, like hitting them on your head and stuff like that, trying to hit the, hear the pitch of them and everything, and then you'd have to try to find matches. And they, they say they came in matched pairs, but they never come in matched pairs. So... Stick's always going to sound a little dif different at that way. Have I watched any shows from this year? So, I'm going to sound like a bit of a snob here. I can't stand watching drum corps anymore. So. <laughs> but I'll watch. I might actually go to the uh, in the theater uh, quarterfinals thing. I've done that several years in the past and just go watch a whole bunch of drum corps over several hours by myself because my family doesn't want to do it so I might do that again but uh, no I don't I don't pay to watch I, I've seen some of the in the lot stuff and it just what just bores the bejesus out of me like I watched the Vanguard in the lot and it's just it's not for me what they do now these days is just boring I don't I don't like Paul Rennick all that much I think his stuff is boring everybody else seems to think he's like revolutionary or something like that so you know maybe they're right and I'm wrong I'm just a picky old old fart I guess who Likes things the way they were when I back in back in my day, so don't listen to me. But it was a it was a different a different line a different sound. Back when I marched and we were doing some very different things than what they're doing now. So y'all young y'all young bucks play a lot a lot different uh, kind of stuff than we did. Everything's freaking rolls now. Fast rolls. And we played a lot of fast rolls, but sometimes just like rhythm and uh, groove. That's what we were all about. That was, uh, it was, we were the only ones that did it then. And kind of probably the only ones, nobody else does it now, so. So, we weren't that special. We played well. Yeah, I think I think drum core mar the marching activity as a whole was more interesting when when it wasn't all just an extension of WGI. When Winter Guard took over, like became big, everything changed and, and marching band, everything changed in drum corps and it's Michael Cesario, man. Can't stand Wayne Downey and freaking Concord Blue Devils and their BS. Not my style. I'm from a different era. There's no shortage of old, like, drum corps and marching guys that are going to tell you about how it was so much better back in my day, and I guess I'm kind of one of them now. DCI Live is pretty awesome. 
it's it's awesome to be there and uh drum lines are drum lines i mean <clears throat> you can see all the movement and everything get a good view and it's just the problem with watching drum core live is it's so hard to take everything in at once and uh recordings are if you can watch a recording over and over again that's that's pretty cool but it's hard to it's hard to get that without having like a flow watching subscription i'm getting tired man it's 11:15 so and i don't have that so i don't i don't really watch a whole lot of it anymore but i see that there's a lot of youtube content in the lot stuff now so that's that's pretty neat pretty neat also all right guys i got to get to bed this is getting to be too much <laughs> i've bored you all to tears we've gotten tons done here what was another 3 hours 48 minutes of work i feel bad that we didn't i didn't get a whole lot other a whole lot of uh, <coughs> pavement in, so we're just fine-tuning stuff. But it, it's a time-consuming process, and I'm glad I got to show it and uh, chat with you all. So it has been a good evening, a um, good Monday evening. I will not be back tomorrow night. I probably won't even be back in the morning. I don't know that I want it. After as long as we went today, I don't know if I want to do this again in the morning. <coughs> Got to keep it fresh, you know, Got not overdo it and uh, try to spend some time with the kids. So anyway, thank you all so much for the chat and uh, for, for the views, for everything, the likes, which what are we up to now in this, in this little stream, this quaint little stream, still seven, so we're still just at seven, my goodness gracious, seven likes. Guys, if you're still here, hit the like button if you haven't already been. But uh, it's always great to see you guys. Sephiris, thank you for being in when you were here. Joanna Steinmetz, thank you for being here when you were here. Isaac, always good to talk to you, buddy. Sticky Rice came in and said hello. The Simulator Concierge, a lot of good banter. Uh, so I appreciate all of you. And uh, can't wait to see you guys again. So let's uh, meet back. Maybe we'll do a little flying again soon. Can't just always be plugging away at the scenery stuff after all. Uh, so everybody... Everybody have a good rest of your week if I don't see you for a while, and as always, be good.